Jesus, thank you. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you please turn to John chapter 14. We're going to be in John 14, 15, and 16, so if you just kind of stay in that vicinity, you should be good. If you don't have a Bible, the Black Pew Bible will be page 901. I want you to think for a moment back to when you were learning a skill or something new. So I want you to imagine for a moment that you are learning to play piano. Maybe you're learning to play a stringed instrument like a violin. And some days are good. Some days are not so good. And some days, the people that are listening to you learn, they love it. And the rest of the days, they, well, they don't. So don't you imagine for a second, you are busy sitting down with your violin, you're sitting down at the piano, and you're learning Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, right? Bum, 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 bum. I mean, it seems easy enough, right? And you've got your violin, and it's just coming out, screech, 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 screech. Not so great. So imagine just for a second that somebody overhears your struggle to learn this, and you hear a knock on your door. Well, you're either thinking, I've finally upset the neighbors. Uh, it's, it, I'm done for. And at your door is Ludwig von Beethoven himself. And, and, and Beethoven steps in and he says, listen, I've, I've heard your cries for help. He said, I wasn't crying for help. Oh, no, I have heard your cries for help, and I am here to help you. Help me with what? Well, with my peace, of course. And so Beethoven sits down with you, shows you proper fingering, gives you proper tempo. And before you know it, it is beautiful. It is as if Beethoven himself were crafting it and playing it. Imagine for a second you're busy tinkering on your Ford in the garage, because if you have a Ford, that's what you have to do. <laughs> you're tinkering away, and there are some noises coming from the garage, and there are some words coming from the garage that we will not mention, possibly here in this room. And as you're going in there, you turn the wrench one more time, you bust your knuckles one more time, and all of a sudden, knocking at your garage door is, guess who? Henry Ford himself. And Henry Ford stops and interrupts and says, I don't think you should be saying those things. And Henry Ford interrupts and says, perhaps I could be of some assistance. Well, okay, go right ahead. We've been studying the Holy Spirit. And we're going to finish up next week. And man, there has been probably no greater subject on the Holy Spirit I've looked forward to than this morning. Because what I've just described for you is exactly what the Holy Spirit does for believers. The Holy Spirit comes in in the, in the interruptions of life, in the difficulties of life, in the great days of life, and interrupts and says, I have heard your cries for help. And I'm ready to help. I am here to meet you exactly where you are with exactly what you need. I want you to seriously think about this for just a moment. When you gave your life to Christ, right, if you were a believer in Jesus, right, you, you realized you could not save yourself, that God is holy and perfect, and you could not come to him apart from Jesus. And so you responded in faith to him and gave your life to him. The Holy Spirit came into you. And is working in such a way to say, at times, uh, 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 uh. And at other times, to interrupt and say, it would be better if you did it this way. And so as amazing as it would be, I mean, because they're dead, for Beethoven to step into our life, and Henry Ford to step into our life, or you fill in the blank, we have something far greater than that. In fact, I want to teach you this word this morning. It is paraclete, or in the Greek, it is parakletos. And so in John 14, 
we are introduced to a word that appears five times in your Bible. And they all come through the gospel writer John. And so when we see this, it can either be in reference to Jesus, or it can be in reference to the Holy Spirit. And so let's go to John 14, verse 16. Jesus is preparing to, really, I mean, they're in the upper room. They've had the Lord's Supper. They've washed feet. And this is the what is called the upper room discourse. He is preparing them, man, the things they need to know for, their, for his departure, for his death, for his resurrection, and, and really prepare them for, I mean, we get a lot of what we know about the Holy Spirit from this upper room discourse. John 14, verse 16. And I will ask the Father, Jesus talking, and he will give you another helper. That word helper is parakletos. And listen, your Bible might translate it any number of ways. And we're going to look at all those numbers of ways. But understand, unless your Bible says paraclete, it's really not getting there. And that's what this word is. It's, it's paraclete. And so mine says helper. Yours might say advocate. It might say counselor. Um, and and I, I think the Amplified Bible literally just lists, lists them all out, which I'm thinking, that's the one time I'm, I'm kind of liking the Amplified Bible. It kind of makes sense. And so I will ask the Father, and he will give you another parakletos, this paraclete, right? It simply means to be called alongside, but it's so much more than that. So he, he references this. Catch this. He says, I will give you another helper. He says, to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So he's saying, listen, I'm going to go. I'm going to ask the father. He's going to send you the helper. He's going to send you the paraclete. And he says, don't miss this. He says, another paraclete. Well, who's the first paraclete? It's Jesus himself. In fact, if you go to 1 John chapter 2, don't go there. That's exactly what's happening. Right? If It says, if we sin, we have a paracletos. We have a paraclete. And it says, Christ Jesus. And so there's, there's these two helpers that are at work in our lives as believers. And notice, who can't receive the Holy Spirit? Everybody who's of the world. Everybody who's not a believer. You're going, well, duh. Well, sometimes it's not that obvious because we take this and sometimes people go, well, this Christian has the Holy Spirit and this Christian doesn't. Not according to Jesus here. Listen, if you are in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. Plain and simple. Right? And so next week, we're going to look at this idea of a filling of the Holy Spirit. We're going to kind of push away some of the false notions and come to a right belief in these things. But let's keep going. Right? Paraclete. It, it, I like to think of it as um, I had a short stint in baseball, um, partly because I was terrible, but partly because growing up in England, about the age of my kids are now, you know what they didn't play in England? Baseball. You know what everybody wanted to play when I got to America? They didn't want to play baseball. So I was like, I, I, I guess I need to learn. Man, I just I couldn't hit. I, I, imagine just for a second, you step up and in the midst of your weakness, and you can have somebody hit on your behalf. Well, I know who I'd call. I'd call Barry Bonds. I don't care if he's a cheater. It's going to go far. It's going to go for my benefit. Okay, I wouldn't call Barry this is what we have in the Holy Spirit. He's, he's a pitch hitter. And so all of these words, advocate, helper, comforter, counselor, they all fit so well. This is why there's such divergence in how they translate this Greek word in English. Because they're all meaningful. They're all there. And listen, they can all be rightly applied in this instance. But no one word fully captures the magnitude of having this one who is called alongside, and really not just alongside, called into, right? right? By the work of, so the, the first word here, 
Your Bible translation might say comforter. And that's really not a bad application. In fact, if you just look a couple verses ahead in verses 26 and 27, look at what the Holy Spirit does. But the helper, or paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus keeps emphasizing this, right? He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And then he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Well, how do we let our hearts not be troubled? How do we have peace? Because we have the Holy Spirit. Because we have the paraclete. And so when we look at this word of comforter, I want, I want to back up for a minute. We have taken the word comfort and we have made it into, uh, we, we've, we've kind of uh, simplified it. Right? Like a, a kid skins his knee and he's got a little blood on there. Let's be honest. I said a little blood. There's two approaches. Right? This is why God gives us, I mean, Lord willing, in his design, a mom and a dad. Because there's two approaches. One approach is, oh, you need a band-aid. And then there's grandparents. You need a band-aid and ice cream. <laughs> right? <laughs> but then there's another approach. Ah, oh, rub some dirt on it, kid. Just spit on it. Oh, clean it up. There's like blood running down their leg. And there's there's moments in my life growing up where I literally needed to go to the hospital. And I'll, I'll give you, there was... Two views in my house. No hospital? Hospital. Went to the hospital, I was like, told you so. When we take the word comfort, we take the word and we think it means put a band-aid on it, put it over the alley. Listen, if you break the word comfort down into its original meaning, that is not exactly what it means. Right? The word comfort, come fort. This is how I put it together in my mind. Because I have a, a, a pianist in my house. If you know the word, the, the Latin forte or fortissimo, what does it mean? It means to be bold, loud, strong. Fort. What is a fort? It is a stronghold. So to properly comfort is, by definition, to strengthen. And so listen, there's two ways you can approach that, right? And, and listen, they're, they're both good ways. And sometimes the comfort that your children need, sometimes, listen, the comfort you need is, I'm really, really sorry. I hate to hear that. Man, I, I, I bet that hurts a lot. Sometimes the comfort we need is, what's wrong? Come on, get back out there, keep going. It's just a little blood. Listen, we need both in life. And here's what's so wonderful. The Holy Spirit knows which one you need. The Holy Spirit brings what? Peace. Not as the world brings peace, but as the Father brings peace. Not to trouble our hearts, but to still our hearts. So the Holy Spirit acts as a comforter. In fact, what? Right as persecutions coming into the church, it says in Acts 9, do you know who comforted the church in the midst of all this? The Holy Spirit, our paraclete. So there's the comforter. Listen, and then there's the advocate. The advocate. And, and, and a lot of times, I mean, people really want to make the paraclete advocate. And it's, it's good because a paraclete was kind of that. A paraclete in, Old Testament, in, in New Testament times would have been a legal counselor that you had, but they would have been a legal counselor who was like a close friend. So not only do you have a lawyer and a good lawyer, but you have a good lawyer who's your friend. I'm going to tell a Phil Aldrich joke about that. Do you know the difference between a good lawyer and a great lawyer? Well, a good lawyer knows the law. A great lawyer knows the judge. <laughs> and here's why I love that joke because I love the person that came from one but also 
it is so incredibly true of where we are in our standing before God. Here's what we have in the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Father, they act as judge. Now the Holy Spirit comes in as our legal counselor to go to the Father, to go to the Son and say, He's good. We're together. We're in on this. And so it, we have this lawyer, listen, who knows the judge. That's the type of paraclete we have. Somebody who pleads our case, who pleads our cause. Listen, somebody to speak the truth of God to us and over us. This is why the paraclete is described as the spirit of truth. Let's be honest for a second. My heart, your heart, our hearts deceive us. We are constantly having to fight lies from the world and lies from within. Well, how do we get out of this system of lies? Our advocate, our legal counsel, the one who speaks truth over us. So listen, you have in the midst of your, when you have doubts, not if you have doubts, listen, when you have doubts, doubts about God, doubts about the direction you're going in life, doubts about church, doubts about people, doubts, listen, doubts and lies, here's what you have. You have a paraclete, the spirit of truth, to come and argue the truth, to argue in your support, and to say, do you not remember you're one of God's kids? Jesus paid for your place on the cross and rose again, and you are part of not just any family, but the family of God. And so we are both being comforted and confirmed in truth. I want you to think about it in one more way. Some of you know what CASA is. Um, Court-appointed uh, special advocate. So children have to come up for any number of reasons in, in front of the court. And so, and actually, it's funny that I make a Phil joke because Phil was a, a big part of CASA for Kansas. And so there's a, a court-appointed advocate so that the child doesn't have to come up and to just kind of spill their guts and to, to be laid bare. They have a defender. They have somebody that goes before them that stands with the child back and stands in their place saying, I will argue your case. I will argue your cause. Church, understand, you have a FASA. You have a father-appointed special advocate in the Holy Spirit. He is arguing your case. Why? So I want you to think about the other side of this coin. There is the advocate, the Holy Spirit, and then there's the devil. And what is the devil known as? The accuser. The accuser. The liar. And so you don't, you don't think that those attacks are real. You, you don't think that those are just coming out of nowhere, right? You understand that, man, we still have a sinful, fallen, fleshly nature. And the accuser is going to take advantage of that. And so, man, we have an advocate, right? And fighting on our behalf, speaking on our behalf. We have a helper. And, and it's just really, in some ways it's not fair, but in some ways, it's, it's just so beautiful, right? That we use this term helper. We have, talk about words that we've misdefined. Man, we've taken the word helper, especially in relation to marriage, and we've kind of demeaned it as if helper is a bad thing, as if it's like, oh, yeah, your mommy and daddy's big helper. No, I, I mean, think about this, is that the Holy Spirit is helping you. Right? The, the husband and wife relationship, there is a helper described here. And then yet God, God, the third person of the Trinity is described as a helper. And so, man, we cannot demean this word that you have a helper in the Holy Spirit. And just one of the things the helper is doing is described in Romans 8. It says you and I don't even know sometimes the words we ought to pray. And let's be honest, there are times in our life where things come up and we just, we just don't know what to say to somebody. We don't know what to pray on their behalf. And so it says the Holy Spirit 
intercedes for us. The Holy Spirit is praying for you. The Holy Spirit is praying on your behalf and my behalf. I need that kind of help. I need that kind of help in my life. I praise God for that kind of help. And then there's the teacher. Turn to John 16, verses 12 through 14. Paraclete as a teacher. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Well, okay, so Jesus has many more things he wants to say, but they can't get it now. So how are they going to get it? Are they going to get it at all, or are they going to get it later? Verse 13. When the spirit of truth comes, there's that phrase again. He will guide you into all the truth, or he will teach you all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. So understand, listen, when, the, when we think about the Holy Spirit, one of the ways that, that we can go wrong is thinking that the Holy Spirit is just going to kind of make up his own thing and do his own thing, right? And, and, and certainly that's evidence in, in some churches where they're like, well, you know, that's the Holy Spirit. It's like, well, that's great. The Holy Spirit will never say anything contrary to the word. Never, ever, ever. We see it here. In fact, the Holy Spirit is only speaking what? The words given from the Father. Jesus says the same thing. Right, so these things line up, they mesh up. This is what he is teaching. It says, verse 14, he will glorify me. Right, the Holy Spirit is this spotlight shining on Jesus. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Right? So the, the Holy Spirit is, listen, teaching us. You ever have those moments where you're sitting with your Bible and it's, and it's as if literally the words are jumping off the page at you. And it's, you've, you've read a passage a hundred times before, and then all of a sudden, this 101th time, something else is going on? You, you see something you've never seen before? Do you understand that when you have your quiet time with the Lord, the Holy Spirit is right there. The Holy Spirit is wanting to teach you. When you teach, when you prepare to teach a child, an adult, the Holy Spirit is there, in on that, wants to be a part of that. I need that advocate. I need that paraclete. To do what? To bear witness, as it says in John 15, 26, to, as we already looked at, he says, you will, he will help you to remember in John 14, 26. Does anybody ever need a little help remembering something? Think about this. The Holy Spirit is like your ginkgo biloba. Or whatever supplement people take for their memories. Or the opposite of Diet Coke. I don't even understand how you would understand that, kids. <laughs> Right, and, and so Jesus is instructing them. He says, listen, you're going to go and you're going to stand trial on my behalf. And Jesus says, listen, don't worry about what you're going to say in that moment. Because the Holy Spirit will speak for you and speak through you. But this is an interesting thing about this remembrance. I think sometimes we think the Holy Spirit is going to supernaturally like inject us with Scripture. And something we've never studied, read, or learned. No, I've used this illustration before, right? Is that when we memorize scripture, when we put it into our mind, when we put it into our heart, we are loading up ammunition to help on the day we need it. We may not need it right then and there, but we are loading up ammunition for the Holy Spirit to launch arrows, man, to, to work against our enemy, to work 
in our midst, to work on our behalf, to work in our families, to work in our church. Right? He will recall, and you will be, it says, guided into all truth. Going back to my opening illustration, I want you to think one more time about this. And so some may have to remember very long-term past. Some you may have to just remember this week. But you're learning, you're learning math. And you just get to that point, and it's like, man, I, I, just, I just can't. And so you go and you sit down with your teacher, and your teacher's like, I just don't understand why you can't get this. You do this, this, and this, and you should come up with this. You're struggling in a music class, and, and you're getting into music theory, and, you're, and they're explaining, they're saying, listen, if you just understand this concept, it unlocks all these other concepts. And he's like, I just don't get it. And I, I remember when I was in geometry class, and, and I, I had two... Praise the Lord for this. I had one student that went on to be a very successful accountant. I had one that went on to be a math professor sitting in front of me. And I think the other became like a, a math junkie too. And I'm sitting in geometry class and I say, I just don't get this. And they said, well, tough. No, no, no. They, they helped. All of a sudden, something was unlocked in my mind and geometry was a breeze the rest of the year. I want you to think about when you learned to drive a stick shift. Anybody ever learned to drive a stick shift? Yeah. I remember learning to drive a stick shift. I remember the many difficulties and the much needed, I needed a paraclete. Because it's this back and forth conversation of, well, you just don't get it. Here, get, get over there. Just, let's switch seats. And so it's this back and forth. Here's, here's what is happening. With the paraclete, with the Holy Spirit, it's not that we have some teacher outside of us. We have a teacher that comes inside of us and says, here, will you let me try? And we have this choice in those moments to say, nope, I've got this. And in our pride, we just push the helper we push the advocate, we push the comforter, and we push the teacher away. But we have one who is on hand, who is ready, who is always in this proper place of teaching. So what do we do with this? I want you to think of what is most helpful and comforting in your life. What is, what is your need on a daily basis? What do you really need to overcome the continual lies and, listen, the guilt that you might have in your life? You look back on an event and you say, man, I just wish I would have done something differently. Or, man, I, I, I just, man, that, that sin, I, I can't believe God would even love me and that there would be even a chance after that. And so these things come bubbling up to the surface and they, they, they come into your mind and they, they sit heavy on your heart. What are we going to do in those moments? We're going to rest in our advocate, rest in our defender, rest in our paraclete, the one who is called alongside us, and realize that what God says is of far greater value than what you or anyone else thinks. There is so much call for attention and so much pressing and pushing for, hey, well, uh, look at me. And they get out of the media spotlight and they say, well, look at me. And people are trying to defend their names and trying to make themselves look better. When we have the son who did the work for us, who took the penalty for our sin, and offers relationship with God freely in repentance and in belief. And then we have this Holy Spirit speaking truth over us and reminding us of who we are in Christ. And so it makes me once again agree with A.W. Tozer, who said, What comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Right? Because we think rightly about God, we can think rightly of ourselves. Because what he says is much more powerful. 
And so we can have a more sure and right understanding of God. That the Spirit with the Word brings into our life. And so this Spirit of truth helps us to identify sin. Right? You think about truth, you've got to take all the truth. The truth is, we're not as great as we think we are. But the truth is, we are far more loved than we could ever imagine. That's the truth that the Holy Spirit is reminding. The Holy Spirit is working to exalt God. Right? What's he going to do? He's going to glorify me, is what Jesus says in John 16, 14. That we're going to examine Jesus' perfect love. We're going to be enamored with his holiness. We're going to be in awe of his sacrifice. And the Holy Spirit is going to continue to illuminate this. But then, there's the truth of the word that the Spirit teaches, guides, speaks. The truth of God's very words to us. And here's what I want us to finish thinking. How did we get our Bible in the first place? Well, some people are like, well, you know, a bunch of people just made it up over time. It's just some legend passed down and then it was eventually documented. It's just the words of men. No, that's not what we believe. In fact, we believe as it is described in 2 Peter chapter 1. It says this. After they have talked, after Peter had talked, he's saying, listen, I was there with Jesus when he was transfigured before us on the mountain, when he showed his full glory of his earthly pre-resurrection body. He's showcasing it, but he said, we have something even better than if Jesus showed up right now glowing in majesty, and this is what that is. It's the scripture. It's as verse 19 says, a something more sure, it's a prophetic word. Verse 20, knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. So where do we get Scripture? It's not from my interpretation. It's not from men. Verse 21, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of men, but men spoke from God. Here's the key. As they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The scripture we have that we are incredibly blessed with is here it is given to us because of the Holy Spirit. There is no Bible if there is no Holy Spirit in us. You think of all the things Jesus is saying to them. The Holy Spirit is going to call to remembrance. They weren't sitting there writing down, hey, Jesus, could you say that again? I missed that. Was that in your PowerPoint? Are you going to email that? They're not doing that. No, the Holy Spirit's going to call to remembrance. He says, what did he say? He's going to teach you all the things that you need. He's the spirit of truth. And so the Holy Spirit is working. I, I, I imagine it like musician Keith Green did is that we are the pen, and God's hand is the one writing. And that's exactly what is happening here with our scripture. The Holy Spirit is using, speaking through men, to write and transpose and put it on there. And so they're, they're hearing this from the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is speaking, and it's coming into a written form that we are so blessed to have today. So think of sitting with your Bible open. The Spirit, as you're sitting with your Bible open, and let's say you get to a verse, you say, man, this is hard. I don't understand this. Or I don't agree with this. The Holy Spirit is right there. (laughs) What a paraclete we have. When that's the same Spirit that spoke in, through the words of the Father, the very Scriptures in the first place. We need this paraclete. The Holy Spirit is illuminating and teaching you. Is that you're directed with the specific words from the Father. Do you have a friend like this in your life? That they always know exactly what to say at exactly the right time? Listen, I I want to be this kind of friend. (laughs) 
<laughs> I do not think I am this kind of friend. I don't think I'm this kind of pastor. But man, I have people in my life, and I look back and I go, man, the words they spoke to me at that time in my life carried me along and through difficult seasons. Or they grounded me in seasons of pride. And so these friends that knew exactly what to say at exactly the right time, you have this kind of friend who knows not just some of the right things to say, knows exactly what to say at exactly the right time. You have this friend. Think about this. What could the Spirit give you or say to you that's better than God's very word? What could he say to you? Then the full truth of God revealed in Christ, that the God of the universe is still speaking. The God of the universe has given you life. The God of the universe loves you. The God of the universe is revealing sin in your life because it hurts your relationship with God. It hurts your relationship with other people. It hurts your own being in your minds and in your hearts. And so the Holy Spirit is not just revealing these things, but is revealing the root of the hurts, the root of the problems. And with the Holy Spirit, we are now washed, refreshed, charged, filled with a source beyond my strength. So do you need comfort? Do you need help? Do you need guidance? Do you need a legal counsel before the Lord? Is your Bible open or closed? Do you ever come across somebody in these scenarios? Do you ever come across somebody who, man, it just seems like they need a little jolt of hope in their life? Do you ever come across somebody who just, they, they need some peace in their life? Do you ever come across somebody who's just hurting? And listen, and not just like skin their knee hurting, like bruised and broken in need of fixing hurting. Did you ever come across anybody like that? Did you ever come across somebody who, man, just seems like they can't get out of their own head? It just seems like the, the lies are so prevalent and their thoughts are just always skewed and wrong. And you think, for a moment, you just go, I, I know they, they're in this tough spot, I know they have this great need, but what can I do? What can I say to help them? Friend, you have the paraclete. And the paraclete that is working in these ways for you wants to work through you to them. Friend, you have the words of the living God. There is absolutely no greater encouragement you could give someone than what you can give than what God actually says. And what God actually says and needs and sealed on the cross and sealed with the Holy Spirit, then these words, you cannot... No amount of philosophy or pop psychology can, can even compare with the truth we have in this scripture. And so, friend, you, you are more equipped than you think. You're more ready than you might even like to think sometimes. But you need to partner up with the Spirit. And to take these words seriously, to put them into your minds, and after you've put them into your minds, let them seep in and stew in your heart till they become a part of who you are. And with the Holy Spirit, you're going to go and you're going to knock on doors, you're going to make phone calls, you're going to send text messages, and you're going to say, start the conversation and say, how can I help you? And you're going to go, God, I need your Holy Spirit right now. 
you have a paraclete. You have a helper, a comforter, an advocate, a counselor, a teacher. You have a friend. Because you, friend, are the body of Christ. If you're in him. So don't be overcome by this world. Don't be overcome this week. As something trips you up. As you think that thought. As you struggle with forgiveness. As you find yourself in turmoil and anything but at peace. Friend, where are you going to go? How how are you going to help? We have a paraclete, you guys. We have a paraclete. So we're we're coming to a day where we, we won't have need of this paraclete. And so enjoy and use up every second of it. And so, right now, our paraclete is knocking on your heart. Inviting some of you in to receive Christ. To believe and to repent. Or to repent of your sin and to believe on the finished work of Christ. The paraclete right now is working in ways in this room for people. Because if you die, you don't know where you go. And the paraclete wants to make sure you have that nail down. And the paraclete is working to reveal sins even in the lives of believers. Why? Because they are breaking us. And it's a detriment to you. It's a detriment to your family. And the paraclete doesn't want to leave you the same. And some of you have walked in here and and you've just had an attitude of woe is me. The paraclete doesn't want to leave you in that state. Because sometimes we need a band-aid, and sometimes we just need a poke. And the paraclete's going to work to make sure you get it right, and you hear it right. So I'm going to ask the musicians to come up. And, and this is an opportunity to respond. As God is speaking, And leading, you can either ignore and push back, or you can acknowledge the truth that you need from God.